All right, you starting? I seen the light flash. Beep. My camera. Oh, my camera beeps. Yours has a flashing light. Mm, it might light for a second. It did light. It's light. Um, I. What are we doing, Clayton? We're going to do a video on um, probably the car that's been on the channel more than most cars. Probably more than any car except for my drag car, I guess. Really? Yeah, the, oh, the white, white one. Yeah, the uh -huh. white Mark Seven Golf R that we did. Basically, from stage two to, and I had mentioned before in the previous videos that we we're going to do a video kind of comparing EQT's uh, standard Vortex Turbo, Vortex XL Turbo, and then their Typhoon Turbo. So I wanted to, we're just going to do kind of a quick video. Clayton will show some of the back videos or dyno runs of that car. Um, as you can see on the dyno now is a Mark IV. But we'll show you kind of what the Mark 7 did and the differences between all the turbos and how they compare to each other spool-wise and power-wise, both on pump gas, R91, and ethanol. So let's get to the dyno screen. So a few things that I want to mention about that car. When it first came here and up until we did the probably the last video on it where it has the Typhoon turbo on it, Everything else, all the turbo upgrades, standard and XL, all were with stock engine. Only the last uh, video series that you would have seen on that is when we built the engine for it. However, when it comes to comparing the horsepower and all that stuff, the engine and the um, compression and all that stuff, displacement was basically all the same. But I did want to mention that as we go through it. So when the car first came here, and we will show some of this overlaid over the screen so you're not seeing everything through the dyno like this on the screen. Um, the first time when it came here, it did 328. That was with a sort of custom tune. I don't, tune. I don't know the brand of it. However, shortly after that, we put on the Vortex Standard Turbo, and that turbo on pump gas made 434 and 403 torque. And you can see the difference, the standard, basically where you see this peak right here is kind of where the turbo comes in full steam. I don't have boost on all of these, so which means actually I'll just click this. Um, so you can see the difference in spool between these two. So this one's at around 3,000 RPM. That would be stock IS38 turbo. And then at, with the standard turbo, it comes kind of in full at around 3,700 RPM, 36 to 3,700 RPM. However, it makes a lot more horsepower. And again, this is on 91. The red line originally on stage two was 91. We never did an ethanol tune on the Vortex standard. It was only ever pump gas because the fueling upgrades only consisted of a high pressure fuel pump. So that 434 was a Vortex standard turbo and a high pressure fuel pump and nothing else. So let's get to the next turbo. Part of the reason we wanted to do this video, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, is that it's really tough comparing turbochargers and setups when there's everybody's car is different. This was on the same car and for the most of the runs that we did on this up until the Typhoon, it was the exact same setup. I think the only thing that it changed from the original stage two all the way up to just before we did the Typhoon was it had a resonator versus not having a resonator. Aside from the fueling things, I guess, which I did mention. So. We switched to the Vortex XL, and on 91, it did 445, 389 torque. We did lose a little bit in the mid-range, uh, and you can see really the comparison between the Vortex Standard and the Vortex XL. So we said earlier that the Vortex Standard spooled at around 3,600 RPM. The Vortex XL is, my computer's a little bit slow here. Um, looks like about four to 500 RPM in the difference. I'll remove that uh, stage two out of there when we continue on. The fueling differences, the reason that this is not really any difference in fuel is because that was on 91 and that was basically the limitations 
for the fuel and those two turbos. So whether we do for the, for the guys that have been following along for a while and they see all the Mark 7 stuff we do, for us, a Vortex Standard versus a Vortex XL, if it's gonna be on pump gas, they make very similar power to each other. The Vortex XL does have room to grow power-wise if you're running ethanol and the fueling mods to support it. But if it's just a straight pump gas setup, then the Vortex XL and Standard make very, very similar power on our fuel. However, when it comes to ethanol, the Vortex XL, as you'll see, starts to really, really shine. So next dyno sheets, Clayton. Beep. Beep. Okay, so I've closed the stage two and stage, or so the Typhoon um, on pump gas starts to bring in quite a bit more power, but as you can see where it spools is quite a bit different from uh, this green one is the XL. So the uh, Typhoon, we're talking like another thousand RPM or so uh, before that thing comes online. Now, that is a huge difference, which is why it makes more power on pump gas. However, the reason, it's kind of a trade-off with turbochargers for those that know. If you wanna make more horsepower, it needs to flow more air. And typically, that means you're gonna sacrifice somewhere along the way. And in this case, you know, looking at the Vortex Standard versus a Typhoon, we're talking about 1500 to 1700 RPM in the difference in spool. However, the standard is never going to make the horsepower that this Typhoon is saying. Clayton, you got something to say? I thought you might have been you're just trying to pay attention to what I'm saying. Yeah, just, I'm learning. So pump gas, four, basically 480 wheel horsepower. I think they can make a little bit more than that um, on pump gas, but on this setup, that was the big difference. A lot lazier for sure, but the capabilities and horsepower is much, much larger. And when we get to ethanol graphs, you'll see the big difference. So now let's compare um, the Vortex XL 91 octane versus ethanol. So this would have been an E40 blend on this car, which really is to the point of maxing out the turbo, to be honest. Um, so the blue run was 91 did 445 and on run 11 in the red, that's with uh, E40 in the tank and it made 522 and 428 torque. And you can see, obviously the turbo spool is basically the same as it's the same turbo setup, but the power increase is substantial all the way out. Even the torque is a big, big difference. Well, I like and where this pony power is going, man. It's What's this it's one? It's heading up there. The pony power, man. Yeah, it is. Going and up then there. The next one that we're going to add to this. So I've removed the pump gas. So this would be ethanol, Vortex XL. And then this is Whoa. Typhoon on ethanol. That was on straight E85. Uh, so the big differences here, obviously, as we talked about, the spool is one thing. The horsepower is another. We're up another 125 wheel horsepower with that turbo. We did um, that engine, as you can see, the, it is revving out a little bit further from stock. Uh, the engine itself has the capabilities to rev out a little bit further than that, but the turbo does start to kind of plateau a little bit up there. So horsepower wise, it might've made a little bit more on that setup, but not too much. I think in that specific car, there are definitely cars out there making 700 wheel horsepower on the uh, EQT's Typhoon Turbo. However, the car, as you guys would have seen for following along, it's basically a street car. It has exhaust. It has, there's certain things that would have been limiting that from making any more horsepower than it did. However, we wanted to do this video to kind of show you, and hopefully I'll get some decent screenshots and, and compare so you can see it, not just Clayton filming this. Uh, you'll see some maybe screen captures of me showing you the actual dyno runs and the differences they made in power on the exact same car. The fueling and a couple things are, that did change really wouldn't impact the horsepower too much based on, as mentioned, 
the Vortex Standard, or the Vortex XL if it just has a high pressure fuel pump, or even multi-port, whatever, if it's just running our 91 pump gas, it's not really gonna make a whole lot of difference. It's when you start adding ethanol to the mix that all of these things start to compound and really show how much horsepower these turbos can make. So hopefully this isn't just me babbling. I know it is. Clayton will add some decent shots of the car on the dyno and maybe some of the engine build and stuff like that. But I did say I was going to do a video kind of comparing all those turbos a little bit more in depth. If you guys have any questions or comments about that car or any of the other cars on our channel, be sure to ask below. This one here, Clayton, we are pretty much wrapped up the horsepower on it. And um, that video is to come along with, as I mentioned, some 2.5 stuff, lots of cool stuff in the works. But Clayton, you got anything to add? No. He's just zoned out and behind He's the camera. You wouldn't even tired. know Clayton's behind there. But <laughs> thanks for everybody supporting the channel. Um, we only have a couple months or a couple weeks left before the end of the year. So everybody have a, have a happy holidays. Hopefully we get another couple videos out before the end of the year. But see you in the next video.